I'll talk about tools and methods and uh, how a project office can uh, package these into a toolbox that can be used in the organization for the projects to be uh, efficient and, uh, and successful. And I will use examples from, uh, from the, our toolbox called POT, but uh, there are of course uh, many other tools available in the market that do the same thing. Why should we have a toolbox? Well, we hear a lot that development is going faster and faster, and <coughs> that's probably true. And uh, not only shall we start up uh, projects and finish them quickly, we shall be agile and uh, handle change. And uh, uh, when we make decisions, they shall not only be, be fast, but uh, smart. So we need all available information at hand all the time to make these decisions. And that's probably a <coughs> good reason to have a toolbox to help us with this. Uh, what we want to achieve is uh, speed. Often uh, the startup of a project can take a lot of time, so if we can speed that up, uh, there's a lot to gain. But for that, we need uh, not only the tools, but support for the tools. We cannot expect to have uh, all the competence needed to set these things up in, in every project. We want to be cost efficient in deliveries with quality focus, of course, and have control of the whole project through the life cycle of the project and uh, have the transparency to uh, easily see all the information in the tools and about the processes. But how does that work in practice? <clears throat> well, let's look some about the content and features of a toolbox. We need to have a method, and uh, in today's uh, product management, uh, it's probably likely to be agile, and uh, quality assurance is always in focus. Uh, the tool set should be proven, any tools proven and tested before they're added to the tools so that the project can uh, count on them and be sure that they will be working. Uh, we want transparency, all necessary information available easily for all involved in the project. Uh, for that, uh, a central point can be a wiki, which is uh, a sharing point information. And we need to support our governance model uh, with information. And they are often interested in, uh, in the progress of the project, so we need to track all our activities. In part, we use a tool called Gyra for that. Uh, we will have a look at that later. Um, for the speed of the development, it's important to have uh, the concept of continuous integration, which uh, is the, the concept of uh, building and testing the, the system regularly to make sure that it hasn't broken. And for the automation of that, in, in part, we use uh, Jenkins as a central tool to do this automation. Let's start with the, the method. <clears throat> uh, it's important that the method covers the whole life cycle of the, the project. And here we see the classical phases of planning, execution, acceptance test, and uh, taking the system into production, and then closing up the project at the end. And in between those, we have clear done criteria specified that can act as the toll gates in the project to decide if to continue or not. Important also to have a, <coughs> a clear handover in the method from the project uh, to operations so that when the project closes down, the operations are able to, to maintain it after that. So what's, what's agile about this? In, in part, we use uh, Scrum and uh, mainly used in the execution phase, we see the sprint integration symbol here. And some may argue that, well, that's in an agile project, we go straight into that phase and uh, we start developing and we continue until we're done. And uh, that might work if you have a, a budget owner that uh, allows you to start a project without uh, really making too much promises about what you will deliver and when. But in reality, there's often a, a budget owner who, who wants to know fairly well what you will deliver and when and uh, to what budget. And then we need to do some planning ahead of time as well. It's good for the organization to have an overview picture of the method like this. If you have it on a, on a website, you can make it clickable to go down into uh, more information. And we'll do that now, looking at the planning phase. <coughs> Here we have a, a build-up of a, a backlog with the requirements. If it's an agile project, we call the, the requirements uh, user stories. There might be an interaction decide made before the, the development project starts, or it's done in the project. And based on that, you, you put together a team as a resource plan. And depending on how much estimation that is expected before you start the execution, 
the team will help with uh, that estimation and it's likely that you will have some negotiation and uh, prioritization before you decide on a scope for, for the project. And if it's a large project, you might divide it into more than one release. <coughs> and the releases are then uh, divided into a sprint plan if you go with Scrum. And uh, if you have this kind of fixed budget, fixed scope uh, project, then uh, there's nothing stopping you from actually doing the full breakdown of the requirements and estimating them and, and dividing them into sprints throughout the whole uh, project. And then you can still use the, the Scrum method and you can profit from being able to handle changes in a, in a controlled fashion during the project. And then in the execution phase, most of you probably recognize the, the Scrum <coughs> method here. We have the sprint planning preparation or a backlog grooming where uh, you make sure that the top priority stories are, are well defined before you go into the sprint planning where you move those stories into the sprint backlog. And then you execute them and uh, afterwards we have a sprint review or a demonstration of what we have achieved in the sprint. And we finish up with the retrospective to uh, gather the lessons learned from the sprint so that we can make improvement before starting the next sprint. And uh, <clears throat> after you're done with the uh, development execution, there's likely to be a receiver of the, the results, a uh, sort of customer who will want to do the acceptance test of this. And in this phase, it's important to have a good uh, way of uh, building, deploying, and handling versions, because if they find uh, uh, bugs, you need to fix them quickly, do a patch release, and uh, deploy again to retest until you pass, and you can have a go-and-a-go -go meeting and go into production. And, uh, the first period of the production, <coughs> there might be a guarantee period, and uh, in any case, you need to hand over the last parts to the operations, so it's important for the project to be active for a while until that's completed, and that you have a, a done criteria that will guarantee that you don't uh, leave the operations without the necessary competence. And something that we often forget or neglect to do is to close the project properly, to uh, have a retrospective meeting, to gather all the lessons learned and document those. And uh, that's important to do because uh, you can profit from using them when starting the next project, not the least the estimates that you want to reuse. Then you can shut down the project. Then let's look at the tools. And uh, as I said, the tool set should be proven that they are tested and verified before uh, handed out to the, the projects in the organization. And there are a number of different uh, <coughs> areas of tools and information sharing is one, the wiki, and the uh, activity and issue control with Jira. And uh, if you need more structured uh, test planning, you might use a, a tool like TestLink. And then we have the continuous delivery with a number of uh, tools necessary. We will look at those separately later on here as well. And setting this up can be, be a lot of work for a project, but if you have a, a project office that is nice enough to provide you this out of the box, you can really kickstart a new project if this can be set up during a day or so. For the wiki in uh, POT, we use uh, Confluence, and what I think is important is that it shall be really easy to uh, edit the information in the wiki. It might be good to have a standard uh, layout of the information so that you can easily find your way around different projects if you are in the governance area. Then Jira. <coughs> Jira to me is uh, generally an uh, uh, errand handling system where you can define different types of errands. You can assign them, add information, uh, handle the status in a process flow. And they've added uh, an agile layer on this to uh, create what we see here is the, the scrum board with the classic uh, columns to do in progress and done. And compared to a manual uh, scrum board on the wall with the index cards, you may think that you lose uh, 
some of the overview using an electronic tool like this. But apart from that, uh, I only see advantages because you don't have to have this big wall available. And uh, today it's feasible to have a big flat screen in the team room if you need to have the overview. But you can work with uh, distributed teams. Perhaps you have part of your team in India or China, or you have uh, project members that need to work from home for a few days. Then uh, this electronic tool is really good to have. So what we see are the stories and tasks that uh, are defined for a sprint. And at the beginning of the sprint, they're all in the left column, and then they move towards the right. <coughs> and uh, when we're done, they should all be in the done column. And to follow this progress, we automatically uh, get this burn down chart uh, calculated. So that's also an advantage with the electronics. You don't have to calculate little figures that people write on the index cards. Also, there's room for any amount of information in these stories compared to the index cards, where there's very limited room for you to add information. So this is typically what a burn down chart looks like. The, the red line is the, what we have planned to do in a linear fashion during the sprint, and the green line is the outcome. So in this sprint, we have more or less followed the plan, slightly behind the schedule there in the middle, but at the end, we, we managed to, to finish the work uh, during the sprint. And then if you sum up the uh, uh, story points of the stories that you have executed. That's your velocity. So that's a measure of how, how fast you, you develop with the, uh, the current team. And that might be something that you want to follow up over time. And in Jira, you get this automatically as well. Here we see the gray bars, which is the estimated uh, uh, velocity for a, a number of sprints. And the green bar is the, the out actual outcome. And this should, after you've worked with the team, stabilize, uh, maybe improve a bit if, you, if you're able to make improvements. But it doesn't give you a way of, uh, in detail, follow up on, on a budget for the project. So if you do run a, a less agile project with uh, uh, demands for a follow up of budget and, uh, and uh, progress, then you might want to complement with uh, the classic earned value chart. This you don't get in, in Jira, but you get all the numbers from Jira, and you can put them into uh, an Excel template that uh, the toolbox should provide to get graphs like this. And here, again, the red line is the budget throughout the whole project. The green line is the, the outcome, the amount of hours or, or uh, amount of euros that you have spent. We're at week 45 here. And the uh, blue line is the earned value, that is the uh, uh, what you have achieved so far compared to what you have planned to do in the budget. And that's an easy way to follow up on, on progress and how you're doing with budget. And a good thing if you combine this with the, the agile work is that uh, uh, you have the uh, sprint demos. So at regular intervals, you show what you have actually achieved. And uh, this earned value is not just something that you're guessing, but you can prove that you have achieved what you're saying that you have. Then uh, I'd like to promote uh, the concept of dashboards. In, uh, in Agile, they talk about uh, information radiation, how important it is to make information very easily available to everybody. And in Jira, you get uh, a number of widgets, standard widgets for uh, graphs and, uh, and diagrams to uh, um, present your information. And you can, uh, it's not just for the uh, activities, but also for uh, defects or risks, or here we have the releases listed as well. You can create different dashboards for the steering group and for the team, and uh, perhaps a personal dashboard to keep track of uh, your own activities. Then continuous integration being the automation of builds and, and uh, unit tests, and the extension of that to continuous delivery, where we also uh, do the full testing and uh, deploy and install and deliver uh, the system. This is fairly advanced and uh, uh, requires a number of tools. So we'll have a look at some of those. First, you need a, a code repository for the version revision control. And two popular tools for that are Git and Subversion. Uh, Subversion is a bit 
simpler, has been around for a while, Git is more advanced, and you can install it in a, in a distributed environment as well. Uh, for the automation, uh, we use Jenkins uh, to automate this whole process. And then code review, that's something that is uh, an essential part of the uh, quality assurance. And it can be automated to, to some extent. In uh, part, we use Sonar tool for this. And it's a good way to uh, quickly provide uh, the developers with information about if they follow the code standards, if they have uh, built in something that could be a bug but hasn't been caught by the compiler, and so on. And then here we see the, the complete flow of the continuous delivery. It starts with the uh, developers uh, checking in code during the day into the code repository, and then typically once a day, Jenkins uh, starts the automated process of building and uh, uh, building the components and unit test the code. Uh, can use a tool like Maven for that. And then after that, you need to put the components together to a complete system, perhaps bringing in third-party components. There's a tool Nexus that can help with that. And then we have the code review with Sonar, and uh, then Jenkins can run scripts to deploy, install uh, in a test environment so that you can run automated functional tests with tools like uh, Selenium and uh, Cucumber. And in parallel with that, you might want to do performance tests with a tool like uh, JMeter. And uh, all through the process here, the tools will uh, uh, send uh, notifications to the team about what has been done and if any problems have been encountered. Not only are there many, many uh, tools involved in this, but also a number of uh, environments necessary in order to bring a new release like 1.1.3 here from uh, the developers' local machines through the uh, <coughs> approval process of different tests up uh, into production. And here it's good to have as much automation as possible, but uh, it is a balance for each project to decide because Automated testing can be really time consuming, so it's not suitable for every project perhaps. But there are organizations that, that have a full automation of this whole chain. And if we zoom back out again a bit to see if uh, our toolbox supports uh, all our forums in the, in the project, we typically have an extended steering group uh, responsible for resources and budget, and they probably just want a, a status overview of the progress. And we have the operative steering group, they want a lot more details about the status, including KPIs covering uh, efficiency and quality, etc. And we have the team that need information, but also uh, the tools to, to execute the project in the sprints with planning, execution, demo, and uh, retrospective. And the question is, do we have the transparency of making all the necessary information available? In the areas of uh, progress, we've seen we have the burn down chart and we have the earned value. We have test status and uh, information about the releases that we have uh, delivered. For quality, we have a defect status and uh, test coverage. And in the area of efficiency, we have the velocity in the agile team. And if we use earned value, we can also have performance indicators for cost and uh, and schedule. So to summarize a bit, with a well-composed toolbox, uh, I think you can uh, support uh, various types of projects, large as well as small, and co-located as well as distributed. And also if they're working more in an agile fashion or with a fixed scope and budget. And uh, if you have a toolbox and a method that covers it all, then it makes it easier. And that was pretty much what I was going to say. <laughs>